Hello guys, in this video, we'll show you guys how we go from this to this. And this to this. I'm a big fan of adventure movies and sci-fi movies. And if you are to make those films yourself, you should focus a lot on the set design, props and the lighting. So in this video, we'll show you guys how we can transform, so to say, any location into a moody film scene. Hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> As you might have seen on this channel, we have now and then shot scenes for a film project called Cloud Mountain. We are making a proof of concept for the film as we go. And as we have previously shot a lot of action scenes for this film, we're now gonna shoot some scenes where we get to know the characters more and make the story more understandable. Jonathan is both an actor and a writer. He has written Cloud Mountain and for the scenes we are shooting now, we needed an epic office slash library location in addition to a children's bedroom. Since shooting out on location requires a lot of traveling, it often costs money to rent a place and you don't have the full freedom to hang up stuff on the walls and such, we actually thought the most practical way to shoot this would be to do it at the office. But could we do that? It's like mainly this way. Yeah. With some planning, we could actually transform our rooms at office into the right locations for the film. So what do you need to do this? What makes the biggest change in the mood for the location? Well, first of all, you need lights and a gaffer to operate the lights. You also should have a set designer or set builder, and of course, a cinematographer and a director. Okay, okay. let's make a film. Yes. Right. We need four books. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, with the team, we could start planning. First off, when you know how much of the room you want to show, you should remove everything that don't fit the story. Since we want to shoot a wide angle in this room, we had to remove quite a lot. And we chose to move some of the furniture we already had and add new furniture to make an interesting background. The biggest change was the children's bedroom. Here we had to remove, so to say, everything. We do have a huge TV on the left side of the room, which was quite hard to remove from the wall. So we find a quick solution by not pointing the camera in that angle at all. And then we needed to add a bed, some furniture, and quite a lot of props to make the room credible as a children's bedroom. The same thing was for the library scene in our meeting room. Then for the lighting, we want to create a quite moody, dark theme. Turn off all the existing lights and add practicals, which are just regular lamps that are visible within the shot. And for the key light hitting the character, we wanted to add either a hard moonlight with our lamp or use the table lamp for that. For the children's room, we pretended that these were windows with exterior outside, so we wanted to add some curtains and a light outside pointing in to imitate either moonlight or sun. I wanted to keep the wall quite clean because we were going to add a hologram light effect to tell the audience that the story was set in the future. Yeah. Our set designer Aaron will work closely with me to build the set, gather the props and furniture we need, and then the gaffer will work closely with Matthias on cinematography to make sure we light the scenes in a way that fits the mood of the story. For this shoot, we are using the small rig RC450B and RC450D as main lights, and also we have the small rig RM01, which is quite interesting in my eyes. Uh, has these small barn doors, and we're gonna use it for lighting, and practicals, and also as a hologram. I'll come back to that later. The lamps has a very cool design. They are mainly made out of plastic, which makes them quite light. Uh, I do like the metal quick release plate that comes with it and the damping system, which makes sure that the lamp won't suddenly drop, even when the handle is loosened all the way. They have a balance mount, which makes them compatible with most modifiers. And the lamps are strong enough to light most scenes with a 450D doing 172,000 lux at one meter with a reflector and the 450B at 121,000 lux at one meter. So the 450B is not as strong as the 450D, but that's because this is by color, so you can change from color temperature 2700 to 6500. On paper, these lamps has a CRI value about 96 and TLCI about 97. Small Rig is using a new technology known as Astral Tech Optical System, which they claim will offer 35% higher output versus other lights. You can control the lamp with the knobs on the lamp itself, with a wired controller, or using their own app. So, there's three in here. 
Oh, if yeah, you get them yeah. scanned and blown up, because then yeah. you can rip them. So that's like a sketch. It's a reproduction from like So Aaron is our set designer slash set builder, and he had a lot of ideas on how we could save money in this production. What, what are you doing, Malky? <laughs> to make them look old. Yeah, to make them look old, yeah. Since props are so important for this shoot, we had three different ways to get them. Number one is to make them ourselves. Welcome to the Views Catering Department. Here we have a bucket of coffee. We're gonna now dunk these maps in it to try and make them look a bit older. Just plain white from the print shop. It now looks a hell of a lot older. My goal is to fill every shelf and wall yep. and bit of space with something. Yep. So as you can see, we don't have enough books for a lot of the shelves. So we've been printing out these. Uh, Malky shot them yesterday using the books we have. And we cut them out, fold them, and then up here you can see we put them in. And they look not fantastic from up close, but from the wide shot, you won't be able to tell that they're fake. Number two is to borrow props and furniture from friends and family. Let's see if we find something in here. I think we'll definitely take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably this one here as well. Okay, that's loose. Perfect. And number three is to buy second hand. I mean, that one's pretty good actually. This one? I, I, yeah, I quite like that one. You can buy something used, like second hand, for let's say fifty dollars, and yeah. you can sell it again for the same price. Yeah. Uh, that's so good with the with the used stuff because it's not losing value unless it's electronic stuff, but. For props, at least it's it's really good with use because they actually look used yeah, they as look well. Used, that's true. What is all this stuff, Anders? Books, lamps. We brought a little bit more than we thought we needed, just in case. <laughs> these are Kim's books, and these are the rest of the books. Oh. Uh, it's beyond expectations. It, it looks amazing, Aaron. Bam. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Things are unfolding. Everything from the props and the, all the furniture and the lighting and all that, we also have small details like the glasses. Like, should it be like this? Should it be like this? Oh, this one. Yeah, uh, yes. Oh, wow. That's a good point. Those on him? That was like so right. <laughs> you know, let's work. We all have one out of it. Since the shoot day was going to be quite hectic with a lot of scenes, rigging, lighting and stuff like that, we made sure that we had some days before to prepare the set design and also put up some of the lights. There's many ways to diffuse the light. You now we can either just bounce it into something white, like a sheet, bed sheet. You can uh, light it through a bed sheet. And what our uh, gaffer did now was to use it with the light bridge reflector with the one that's called Diffusion 4, which makes the light a little bit soft but still it's easier to control where it's pointing. So it's a little bit soft and still you can point it in different directions. So that's interesting. I'm looking forward to see how it looks on camera. I'll come back to those reflectors a little bit later in the video. We're putting up the monitor now as well and the camera because what you see in real life might look quite different on camera. So putting up the camera now, just finding a wide angle really quick, putting up the monitor so we all can see what's happening here and then uh, it's easier to adjust the lights and everything. This is not the position to be in now, so <laughs> late in the day. Oh, oh shit. Well. Could be nice with some more uh, things like toys. <laughs> Calm before the storm. Are you ready, Jonathan? Always. Do you think everything will run smoothly? No. <laughs> I think that you know, when you face problems, it's only a state of mentality, a mindset. You always, if you stay positive, things will fall into place. What do you think will be the most difficult part today with your with your role? Maybe to play that I'm sick. Yeah. So today we're shooting uh, four scenes. We have a hologram, we have moonlight, we have practicals. 
and then uh, we're also going to do one that is a little bit in the morning as well in the library. So it's going to be a lot of lighting today, so I'm glad Eduard is here to help out with that. <laughs> it's important to show it's in the future, but not too much. So we're going to use the hologram in VFX, we're going to add this as a light source for that, and then we're going to add something in post. The lighting is so important, so we just have to use a lot of time on that, so that's what we do now as well. Okay, so we're using the Canon C300 with the Vespid Prime 16mm for this shot and then we have the uh, Kata 18-35mm uh, to 35 millimeter for most of the other things and probably going to use the Vespid Prime 15mm as well. Okay, so yeah, welcome to this, uh, to this shoot here at our office. Then it was a day for the shoot and the first scene was the children's bedroom. You good? Camera. Good. Slate in, targeting in. Och jag försvinner ingenstans, okej? Okay? Du är en stark jente. A strong girl. Never let that happen to you, Emma. Or to Mr. No Gender Specific Rabbit. And... Keep practicing your English, little girl. A very few understands our tongue. Nowadays. <laughs> so now in this scene we have changed um, yeah. to a new scene. So now it's uh, morning or day morning. Also rigging up the 450D to create uh, shapes with these uh, flags and uh, make it more interesting, more contrast in the shot. So using both amps. Emma! When directing, it's important that you make the actors feel comfortable, make them trust you, and also that you are not there to criticize them, but you are there to lift them up so they can perform even better. So we did use some time beforehand to get to know each other. I also let her know that we could do the take over and over again, so it was not a problem if she did something that felt wrong. Then it was time for the library scene and yeah, it took some time to prepare that uh, room. So everyone at the office had to help out to finish up the room before the shoot. It's better than having a little bit of white showing. Okay. That's so cool. That's crazy. Good job, Aaron. Thank you. That's yeah. Everyone else helping as well. Yeah, thank you, man. Since this room isn't that big and we wanted to be flexible with the camera movements for all the scenes in the library, we used some interesting gear from the light bridge called Seago Reflector Kit. This kit includes different reflectors, or mirrors as you can call them, to reflect the light in different ways. They come in different sizes and diffuse the light in different ways, and they can easily be attached to your light stands. We use this to be able to light our scenes from a bow, then we could avoid getting things in the shot, such as light stands, cables and such. When shooting a dark scene, I like to use a lot of practicals. In this case, the table lamp became the key light, and the small rig 450D became ambient blue light in addition to a moonlight window shape on the wall. Since we don't see any windows in this wide angle, I pretended that the window was next to the camera, so the cold light came from this direction. When we changed to morning light, we simply changed the lamp to 450B and made it quite warm to imitate a sunrise. Again, we shaped the light to make it look quite dramatic. Three, two, one, action! Thanks to the quiet cooling fans in the lamps, we could record good quality audio and please our sound designer. <sighs> 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 
To create an interesting effect to the light, we lit the 450B through a cardboard box with some holes I made. This could imitate the sun lighting through some branches. We also shot some evening shots with two characters, where we softened the cold moonlight from the 450D with a softbox and laid it from the side of their face, and then imitated the warm light from the practicals hitting the other side of the face. It's a wrap, the shoot is over. Oh, you know, when you do a film on a budget, uh, that's quite ambitious and we have a tight uh, time schedule. It's quite tiring, especially when you get old like me, I'm 35. Or is that old, Emma? It's not old? Okay, thank you. I'm not old. Nevertheless, I hope you liked this video and that you learned something new. And if you feel interest in the Cloud Mountain project, maybe you know someone who would like to invest in this film, let us know, send us an email, and we'll see if this turns out to become the big thing that we are hoping for. Stay tuned by subscribing, I'll see you again soon in a new video. And if you haven't seen our previous video about virtual production with William Foucher, the guy himself, check out the video by pressing the annotation appearing somewhere here, and I'll see you again soon. Hello!